Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining us. For those of you that know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn. I run the services at medcomsnetworking.com. So this is information services, activities, resources for people who work in and around the global medcoms community, by which I mean people who work in and around medical communications, medical education, medical publishing, and the associated businesses. Uh, you'll find lots of information at medcomsnetworking.com and specifically, for instance, lots of video content at Network Pharma TV. Or for instance, particularly if you're interested in joining medcoms and, and starting work as a medical writer, account manager, go and have a look at firstmedcomsjob.com where there's lots and lots of information, careers guides, webinars, and so on. And I'm having a little bit of fun at the moment. I'm talking to people who work in and around medcoms and just asking for a little bit about their personal stories and, and what they're up to these days. So today, absolutely delighted to um, to be joined by Maureen, Maureen Road, uh, Reed, sorry, from Oxford Pharmagenesis. Maureen, um, just give us a, a little bit of the background. How did you what, start at the beginning and lead us up to where you are now? Okay, over to you. Yeah, sure. Hi, Peter, and hi, everyone watching this. Um, my name is Maureen, but everybody calls me Mo, and I am a talent acquisition partner at Oxford Pharmagenesis. I do have a, quite a different background, I'd say. It's in HR and talent acquisition um, and in, in very different sort of sectors, although I do have a background in life sciences recruitment, um, which is helpful, but we all know that Medcoms is a different kettle of fish and a very, very special place. So I feel like I've learned quite a bit um, in the past, you know, almost two years that I've been in Medcoms um, and yeah, I'm loving it. Excellent. And, and, and just give us a little bit, a couple of minutes on, on Oxford Pharmagenesis, just for anybody that doesn't know Oxford Pharmagenesis has come from. Yeah, so Oxford Pharmagenesis, we are an independent health science communications agency, and I think that's really what differentiates us is, you know, even though we are growing, we just hit 500 colleagues, um, which is quite exciting. We've grown um, quite quickly, but we still have that sort of independent, we are still independent and we still have that sort of family feel. Um, and we really, really value the sort of the growth and development of our colleagues. So I think um, for whatever level you are, if you um, have years and years of experience in Medcoms or you have no idea what Medcoms is, um, Oxford Pharmagenesis is a great place to look and we're always happy to, to chat with people if they're interested in a career with us. Okay, great. And I'm going to push you a little bit further. Oxford Pharmagenesis, just give us a sense. Offices in various parts of the world. Just give us a quick rundown of where you yeah. are. Yeah, so um, we have offices in Oxford. We have two offices in Oxford, London, Cardiff, Cambridge, as well as the US. We have an office in Philadelphia and in Melbourne as well. Excellent. So a global organisation. So um, I, you're a little bit different to the sorts of people I talk to normally who are actually doing medcoms, as it were. But I think this is part of the fun of this is talking to someone like yourself, um, obviously very involved in the company, but a little bit sort of standing back from the actual work, as it were. But let's just be clear about this. You're in talent acquisition. So you're you're the person that people are going to talk to when they come and join medcoms. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's actually it's interesting that you're having me that that we're chatting about it today, because one thing, even though I, I do always sort of um, I always say that I'm a lay person because I don't have a scientific background myself, but I'm a person who really, really loves to learn. So, you know, through mentoring programs. So I work with medical writers, associate medical writers, medical writers, senior medical writers, and I ask them to take me through what their day looks like. So if they are working on a manuscript or something, obviously I can't write up. I, I don't do publications, but I want to know their process. I want to know what they do. So I find that quite fascinating. It, it helps me do my job um but yeah i would say i guess for for me who i am i guess i'm the sort of gatekeeper if you will or the rest of talent acquisition because we're the ones that you talk to in a first you know a, as a first person that you're talking to in the organization to learn a little bit more um or to learn about medcoms as an industry as well okay okay and um, i i have this flippant way of talking about you know i, I talk about medcoms is booming um and over the last couple of years has boomed even more you're, you're nodding, but just a moment or two of reflection on how, the, you know, the state of the business and, and, and recruitment terms. I mean, we're agreeing you're just you're just recruiting a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just across the board. And I think more so than any specific agency, it's the industry that's just getting a bit more awareness, I think. And that's going all the way down to sort of, you know, um, academic sort of level. So even, um, you know, we're doing quite a few things like awareness of medcoms, like even at um, sort of, I think you call it primary school in the UK, right. but like sort of elementary school. Crikey, that's a that's early. <laughs> it is, it is. But just to just say, there are 
you know, there are opportunities in science, you know, so even like that, but then at university level as well, the awareness hasn't really been there for years and years and years. It's obviously you've done so much and I can't even tell you how many times I point people in the direction of first med comms jobs and network pharma. But I think now that the industry is getting a little more light on it, um, it's just, it's going to help with recruitment. It's going to help with growth for, for all agencies really. Absolutely. Um, and again, um, you I think you said, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've been at Oxford Pharma Genesis about two years. So, so yeah. So we're talking in August 2022. So, you know, a couple of years of the pandemic, you, your experience has mostly been the pandemic. Yeah. Um, again, just a few reflections. I'm just intrigued about how and, and from your point of view, working in a company like Oxford Pharma Genesis during the pandemic. So on online interviewing, onboarding and so on. Just talk a little bit about how you found all that and how the candidates have found that experience. Yeah, I think really in general, and it's not even down to the industry, I think just altogether flexible working has been such a topic of conversation and I think we were almost kind of forced into it with the pandemic, um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think you know, companies were kind of forced in that direction. For us, you know, it actually ended up working really well. We're, we're very flexible in terms of even, you know, um, interviews and things like that. Um, a lot of times they happen virtually. It's just so much easier to just get on a quick Teams call rather than, you know, having to drive across the country sometimes for an interview. But that being said, um, I did set up a couple interviews this week for in, like face-to-face -face interviews, right. Um, right. both teams were quite excited about. So I think it's, good. <laughs> it's like, it, you know, being flexible, I think um, is nice because that FaceTime, when you see somebody in person for the first time, like, oh, I didn't know you were that tall. It's, you, know, <laughs> or, you know, it's 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 nice to be able to, to see someone in person. Sometimes. Just, just on that note then, um, uh, Whose choice is that? Are you offering the candidate the choice to come in or not? Or is it as simple as that? Yeah, it tends to be actually. It depends on a lot of factors. But, you know, because we're open, obviously, most of our at Oxford Pharma Genesis, most of our offices are, are um, down south in the UK. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't consider candidates who are up in the north. Um, so, you know, that's it's it's really down to sort of the candidate, how easy it is to come in. But of course, if, if someone's looking to relocate and things like that, we're very flexible for that too. Okay, and, and touching on that, and just to emphasize the point, you have got people working all over the country. I mean, we're talking in the UK. Um, I know you're global, but let's just stick to the UK for a moment. You have literally got people working all over the UK now, and presumably some of them don't come in the office very much at all. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we have quite a few people kind of around the UK, also in the US, just spaced out quite a lot in different time zones and everything. Um, we do have a little hub, actually, in Edinburgh, um, because we have a little hub of Scottish uh, sort of writers, not all Scottish, but they're in that area, <laughs> and they get together on occasion, um, like, you know, once a month. So that's actually quite exciting. Um, but yeah, yeah, all over the place. Okay, okay. And, and again, slightly simplistic question, but, um, you know, we, we've gone down a trajectory, you know, flexible working, remote and so on. Do you see that just being the way it's going to be now? Or do you see people ending up being pulled back into an office? I think uh, that's a really good question. And I think it can go, I, I think, honestly, I think it really depends on on what works best for the team, for the individual, because I think there is so much value in actually being next to somebody. So for example, for an associate medical writer who's just coming into med comms, they're going to learn so much more kind of through osmosis by sitting next to somebody yeah. rather than on a team's call because you're not on a team's call for, you know, for the whole day. Um, so I think there's value in both really, but being flexible to, to either side. I mean, personally, for me, I'm fully remote. I can do my job right, yeah. pretty much from anywhere in the world. But I think when you are, you know, it, for a medical writer, for example, or, or an account um account executive for those types of, of colleagues who've just joined us i think there is a lot of value in, in being in the office sometimes so i think it's a little of both okay okay and so i'm going to put you on the spot now we didn't uh, rehearse this but there you go I, <laughs> i'll have a bit of fun with this um so you're you're responsible let's 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 stick with the entry levels the, the people who are coming into a company like Oxford pharma genesis right and let's you know medical writers account management type stuff let's let's just simplify it down so have you got a couple of tips that you would throw out maybe for a medical writer and something else for an account manager you know the sorts of things that you're looking for as talent acquisition what might they bear in mind if they're coming to you yeah so i think one thing that 
one thing that immediately comes to mind is the importance of a cover letter. And I know that that is like hotly debated, not just not in medcoms, but just in general, how relevant is a cover letter. But if we're talking about being a medical writer, writing a cover letter and, and really selling yourself, talking about your achievements and why you're passionate about science and writing and things like that. To me, honestly, I when I screen CVs and cover letters, sometimes there's more importance to me in, in, that, in the, the cover letter than the CV actually. So starting there would be good um, with a CV. Um, I think besides that, I think an, an something else that medical writers or prospective medical writers should uh, maybe keep in mind is how open they are to feedback and and not, I mean you would know you know in, in this industry I think feedback is is really important so not taking things personally if you've right. done something right. that could have been better that's also another thing that uh that I would I guess suggest. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. And and the and 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 we're always saying the same thing. But I'm going to use this as an excuse to say again: attention to detail is is hugely important. It's what everyone talks about. You know, someone writing to you needs to think about the fact that you're going to look at that quite critically and go, "They spelt my name wrong." Go oh, away, definitely. sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So the, look, writing the, test, the writing test. I'm not going to go into detail on that, test. but you know. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. And and I didn't want to go too far with any of this. I just wanted to get a sense from you of the sorts of things you're looking for. So absolutely, we haven't got very long on these calls, but it's great just to hear a little bit about your own position and and and, and where you're coming at things from. So I'm going to say a huge thank you to you for that. Um, I know I can speak for you and say to anybody watching this that they can they can reach out to you via LinkedIn. You're always going to be interested in hearing from anybody that's interested in oxyphomogenesis or just interested in having a chat maybe about opportunities in medcom. So on that note, I'm going to say yeah, thank um, you and ask you to- One thing if go I on, can quick, just mention go on actually, then, yeah. so any entry level people can definitely get in touch, but I actually um, was just promoted to uh, look after the US. So I'm going to be looking fully after sort of US recruitment from now on. So that's quite exciting because we're growing over there. Okay. And, and I think my background and my accent that might um, help me in this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, good luck with that. Thanks so much for talking to us and, uh, and have a good day. Just a little wave. Bye-bye. Thank you.